Hello everyone. Welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number 14, we'll be adding sound effects to the game. Now Pixelpad has a selection of sounds we can pick from already, similar to how the sprites work. If we click on the plus sign beside sounds, it opens up a different section of the asset store. You can sample each sound by clicking it once. Let's add a sound effect for the player's jump. I'm going to use the first jump sound in this list. Click Select Asset, and I'm call it, going to call it Jump. Notice how it's a jump.mp3. Just like how you might have a different type of sprite, like this .jpg, the sounds might be a .mp3 or a .wave or something else entirely. Make sure that when you're looking for the asset to use it, you get the extension correct. Now that we've added the sound to our assets, we can use it inside our classes. Let's create it inside the player start. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. So since I'll be using this sound effect inside the loop, I need to say self, and I'm going to name it jump sound. And it's going to be equal to a new underscore sound. Now inside this new sound function, we need to supply the name of the asset we want, which is jump.mp3. Now that we've set this as a variable, we can use it anywhere we like in the player. Let's head over to the loop and find the code for where we jump. Here it is. When we press the space bar, first we check if we're on the ground, and then we set the jump timer. When we do that, we're also going to play the sound. So we use the play sound function, and we tell it to play that self.jump sound variable. This uses the sound effect we created in the start. So it's going to play this jump.mp3 when we jump. Let's try it out. There it is. So if you find the volume a little bit too high, you can actually reduce it. On the next line, I'm going to say set volume. Now set volume requires two pieces of information. First, the sound effect that we want to modify. So I'm going to say self.jump sound. And then a comma and then the volume I want it to set it at. The volume is a number, and it's normally set to the number one. If we want to reduce the volume, we need to use a decimal. So I'm going to reduce the volume to 0 0.5, which is half of what it normally is. If you wanted to make the volume twice as loud, you would use the number two. I don't recommend that personally. You might hurt your ears. Let's see the effect it had. If you find it still loud, you can reduce this number even further, say 0 0.2 or 0 0.1. Next, let's add a different sound effect for when the player bounces off of enemies. Scroll back down to the sounds, and we're going to add the second jump. I'm going to add it and name it Bounce. This is another .mp3. And just like the first one, we want to set it up as a variable. I'm going to call it Bounce Sound. And it's a new sound using the Bounce.mp3 file. So where do we want to play this sound? Well, wherever we bounce off the top of an enemy. 
Let's look at the collision checks for that. I have all my collision checks for the enemies down at the bottom of my code. So first, let's see when he collides with a fly enemy, let's also play the sound effect here. So play underscore sound self dot bounce sound. Now we want this inside of each collision with the enemy. So I'm going to copy this line and look at the other collision checks. So if I jump on top of a rock enemy, I play that sound. Now sometimes when you paste a line, you need to fix the spacing for it. I want this to be lined up with these lines here so that it all works out. If I collide with a turnip enemy, same thing. And if I collide with a rhino enemy, same thing. You can test this out right away. If I jump on top of the rock enemy, I get that sound effect every time I land on top of them. Next, let's add some more sound effects. I'm going to add four more here. First, let's get the laser sound effect for when we shoot the laser. I'm going to name this laser, and it's another mp3 file. I'm also going to add a sound effect for when we collect the fruit. For that, I'm going to use this correct sound. I'm going to name this one fruit. This one is a dot wave. Next, let's add one for when we complete the level. I'm going to use the beep sound effect. I'm going to name it level win. And finally, I'll add an effect for when we lose the level, if we fall off or we run out of health, or even if we run out of time. I'm going to use this bubble sound effect and call it level lose. So now we've got four more sound effects to add. Let's start simple and add one for the laser. Inside the player start, I'm going to add another sound variable. This one's going to be laser sound and it equals new underscore sound, and it's going to be using the laser.mp3. So let's look for where we shoot the laser. We use the F key to do that. There it is. So whenever we create a new laser, we're also going to play that sound. So let's say play sound self dot laser sound. There we go. This one is a bit loud, so I'm going to reduce the volume quite a bit. We can use that same set volume function, and this time we're going to be reducing the laser sound volume. I'll set it equal to 0 0.2 much better. Now for the fruit collecting, we did that collision check inside the fruit class. So if the fruit collides with the player, that should be what creates the sound. So inside here, we're going to say this is a collect sound, and it's equal to new sound, and it's going to be the fruit dot wave. When we want the player to collect it, we can say play 
sound self dot collect sound let's see if I can get a fruit out of this rock enemy here there it is there that one works as for winning or losing the level inside the player is where we check for a collision with the castle so that's where we should also add the sound effect for it. So we'll say self dot win sound equals new sound. And that's going to use the level win dot wave. So let's look in the loop and find that collision check with the castle. There it is. And let's go ahead and play that sound. Finally, if the player loses the level, that's handled inside each level. So we'll need to make the sound effect inside each one. It doesn't matter where we set up the sound variable, you can do it the first thing if you want. We'll say self dot level lose equals new sound level lose dot wave and every time the player loses the level either they run out of time or they run out of health or they fall off the bottom we're going to play that same sound self dot level lose let's go ahead and check that out I'll set the level to level one so if we test this out we should get a sound effect if I fall off the level there we go and I'll also get a sound effect if I win the level perfect Go ahead and add as many sound effects as you like. Maybe the enemies will create a sound effect when they're defeated. Maybe the moving platform has a sound effect. If you have sound files on your computer, you can also upload them by clicking the Upload Asset button. You can use any sound or even music that you like. That brings us to the end of the platformer lessons. Congratulations on your working game. If you want to share it with friends or family, I'll show you how. First, check out the My Apps section and find your game in your list. Remember we named ours Platformer. If you click on the play button, it'll bring you to a page where you can play your game directly. At the top is a link to your game, and whoever you share it with will be brought to this screen to play it too. Thanks for sticking with this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep on coding and make your game stellar. Until next time!